Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Rox Berkey on today's show. So welcome to Indie Beacon Radio. So I am so excited because I get to have Dr. Don Menge here with me tonight. Don, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. So I want to go through several of the things you have going on because you are a very, very busy author and I'm, <laughs> I'm enamored with all your children's books. This is amazing. Um, well, we'll start with my day job. Um, I teach students with severe cognitive delays and I've been doing that for over 20 years. Yeah. I lecture at the local university and um, I write children's books on the side, <laughs> you might say. And I have a series, Queen Bernita's Visitors, educational series, and it's based on my family adventures. Really? So, yeah. So Bernita uh, is my grandmother. She was. She's passed away. And so everyone in the books is either part of my family or a friend, and I have some of my students in my books. Oh, my and, God. Really? And so every, yeah, so every adventure is something we've actually done. And uh, so we've been to Kona. This one is based on Kona. And I have a childhood friend that moved there and his wife came from there. So I visited them a lot. And so actually I've done two books on him and that one doesn't have a picture, but they're all based on the things that we did when we were in Kona. And we went swimming with the sharks and we went um, to see the hula dancers and we went down to the bottom of a lava tube and swam, and all the people in the book were the people that were on this adventure with us. And this one is my one I just released in May. This okay. one is pre-K to first grade. So all my books go from pre-K to sixth grade. This one is pre-K, and it's the format is days of the week, months of the years, and the seasons. And then in each month, she has a new friend and a new activity or a new subject or a new animal. So this one is based on the train ride from Williams, Arizona to the Grand Canyon. And then afterwards, we went on the Polar Express with Santa Claus. So oh, my goodness, how fun is this that? This picture oh, is a picture of my grandson, Blake, who fell asleep in Santa's lap. So this came from an actual picture. These are the family members that went on the trip. There was 19 of us. And so they're the ones that are inside of the book. And so the queen goes and learns, like she's reading on the train. And uh, this is my grandson, Blake. And we're learning about the flora and fauna that's around us. And so that was my most recent one. And this one, this one is based on New Orleans. And in here, this is sixth grade level. So it goes higher. And as you can see, there's a lot more facts, a lot more information. But this one covers uh, plantations, and I went into the bayou, and I held a baby alligator, and that's in here. And we talk a little bit about the French Quarter, and we talk about jazz music, and um, that was a really fun trip. And then this one is a paddle boat trip I took up the Snake River. And so this one is also fifth and sixth grade. It talks about all the things we did there, and each one has seven facts on each subject. Each month is a new friend, and this one is Baja, Mexico. This one has, we went kayaking to the La Bufadora, and we took an ATV ride to a German eatery, and this talks about um, some Mexican, uh, learning to mex dance in Mexican dance. Oh, I can't talk. Okay. <laughs> 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 and it has some history, and uh, this one is also fifth grade, and we went swimming with the dolphins, and all of that is in here. This one is one I released last year. Let's see if I can get that back in there. Okay, this one. This one is also on Kona. This is my second one. It's called The Volcanic Islands. This one I published in 2019. Now, this one has won quite a few awards. And the, something that I'm doing recently is I started entering my books and my book videos into film festivals. 
and they're being selected and I'm winning awards. Now the whole series has won 41 awards so far. Yikes. So, yeah, so now I'm starting to win some of the film festival awards. Now the one award I won from Conquering Disabilities with Film is uh, for the, my whole series, I won the Special Recognition Champion Award for the writing of my series because I've included disabilities in my books. Oh my goodness, Dawn. So, so this is amazing that you're hitting that kind of an audience with these books. So why did you decide to focus on children with disabilities? Because that's a very important aspect of our society. Well, because this is what I do every day. <laughs> and okay. we, do, we do a lot of community, uh, community instruction. We do workability. And so part of our job is to not only teach our students to be able to function in the community, we're also teaching the community to, to be able to work with our students. So we teach them how to buy products, we, they work, and, and um, all sorts of things. So we ride the city bus. So this is part of teaching the children and the adults who are reading the books about the different disabilities. Now this one, this is Connor. Connor was my student for several years and he has autism. And this is his dad. And they're teaching the queen about the volcanic national park. But what he's teaching him the seven facts is his communication device. So he's teaching the queen how to use his communication device and why he needs to use it because he's nonverbal. Okay, so, so and, Don, stop there for just a second. Okay. From a disabilities perspective, so Connor has a vocal or a, a verbal kind of an issue going on. So how does he use your books to communicate? Let's kind of take it back to a basic level because not everybody's gonna have your frame of reference. Okay, he isn't using my book. He's, he is teaching the people who are reading my book about him okay. and why, why he's using the communication device. So, so if a child or an adult were reading this right. and, they're, and, they're, and they're, they're talking about it and they'll go, oh, I saw someone doing that, you know, when I went wherever, McDonald's or wherever I went, right. but they didn't know why, like, why are they carrying this iPad around? Why are they carrying these little cards around? You know, why aren't they just talking? Because a lot of people don't even understand any of that. Sure. So now they're reading this and it's just a little snippet of the disability and what Connor's doing. But the next time they see someone who's walking around with an iPad and it's iPads talking for them, right. they'll understand, okay, this child is nonverbal. This child can hear you. And, right. and most of the time they can process, I'm sorry. That's okay, they take process, care. They can process what you're saying Right, <laughs> but, but they can't verbalize it, but they can verbalize it on the iPad. And okay. the high okay. students can write complete sentences. To okay, you. so if this happens sixth grade level, so they have the learning level of sixth grader, just like any other sixth graders, their communication tools are a little bit different. Yes. All right, so how does that impact them if they're multilingual? So if they're Spanish speaking, same thing they, they would be taught, um, well, for us, we, it, we would teach them in English. Okay. Yeah. But uh, if, if they're nonverbal and they can't, they can't communicate with words, we can use pictures. It's called a picture exchange. Okay. And they're just like little pictures. And the pictures can be put on the iPad. So let's say they want a soda at Soda McDonald's. So they can press the soda and the communication device talks. So the person that's or taking the orders hears the word soda. And mm -hmm. then so that, of course, would be in English. You know, mm -hmm. but, you know, you can program them in any language. But, you know, we, we, we speak English as a primary language here. So mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. But if you're nonverbal, <clears throat> I mean, and you really and you can't function at a level where you can read the words or write sentences, then right. it's down to just the pictures. And we also take pictures of the actual things in their in the person's life. Like okay. we'll take a picture of their school bus or their mom or like their favorite food or their bedroom, you know, or the local McDonald's or the local school bus or whatever they're doing and put them on there. 
so that they're very familiar with that. They're not just generic little pictures. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting, Dawn. So what I want to do is, unfortunately, we got to take a short break to hear from our sponsors. Now I come back and talk about how you went into this avenue of relating to children with disabilities. So please stay with me. Okay. Marianne Fairmouth is a career consultant with 30 years experience in the national recruiting world, a multi-award winning author in multi-genres, and a speaker that gives presentations to help you succeed. Her book, Revolutionary Recruiting, made the top 20 global list of recruiting books. Find her on Amazon, your favorite bookstore, or at fairmoth.com. Factor 7, the newest thriller by author J.D. May will keep you turning the pages with mystery, betrayal, lies, and infidelity. Ripped from the headlines, Factor 7 follows two prominent doctors who uncover a clandestine plot to spread a bioweapon with a 98% mortality rate. Journey with them as they experience a world of murder, power, entry, and corruption, where it becomes deadly clear that exposing the truth is just as dangerous as the weapon they seek to expose. Welcome to the Lone Star Festival, where Texas authors, artists, and creators come together for a Texas-sized event. Join us on May 29th, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Town Square, downtown Sabine, Texas. Free for all readers. Produced by Texas Authors Institute of History. Sponsored by B4R.Store, a bookstore for readers, Authors Marketing International, and the City of Sabine. Hello, I am the author Denise Bryson. My first book is The Things That Crossed My Mind, Inspirational Poetry with Life Lessons. And then my audio book is Love's Reality. And it is also inspirational poetry with a jazzy flair. And then my new book is The Sex, The Lies, and The Soul Ties. They're really short stories uh, written from a poetic uh, expression. And then I have my first children's book series, the Blinky series, which the first book is called Meet the Coins, and it is both in English and Spanish. And then the new book uh, from Coins the bills. I am the author, Denise Bryson. Looking to embrace your children's imagination? Check out Diane Floyd Bames' books for kids. There's The Moonling Adventures, all about the animals in the Serengeti. And then there's Harry the Camel, learning to love yourself just the way you are. Then The Little Girl in the Moon. There's one about friendship, another one about the big ideas, which is an inspirational story, and then tour Tycho Town, right there in Tycho Crater on the Moon. All of Diane Floyd Bang's books are available at B4R Store. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Rox Berkey on today's show. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio, and I'm here with Dr. Don Minge. I'm Rox Berkey, and Don, I really want to get into why you decided to focus on children with this sort of disability. Autistic children need a lot of support, so can you kind of give us a little background, please? Well, as I said, I teach students with severe cognitive delays, <laughs> and so this is what I do every day. I've been doing it for over 20 years, <laughs> and as as all the characters in my book, they're real people. So I want the, want the world to see, you know, this is a real person and right. this is what they're doing. But I didn't, don't just do autism. Uh, in this book, I also have Rett syndrome. I have Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, uh, deaf and hard of hearing, uh, visual impairments. So there, about half of my books, there's at least two children that have a disability. Okay. in them and it focuses on this like seven facts and it kind of explains it like in this one i also have this beautiful girl okay in ireland ireland, ireland has Rett syndrome okay and there are seven facts about Rett syndrome and what she's doing is she's creating lays for her classmates her and her mom mm -hmm. so the queen is learning why she needs her mom to help her make the lace because she can't manipulate it because of the muscular problems. So it right. kind of explains it in just a little bit. So, so if a child is reading this and they see someone in a wheelchair who can't really move around very much, 
right. they might have a better understanding of why that is, you know, and, but it's just, it's not like you're, you're embedding it into them, you know, like kind of pounding it into them. It's just a little, a little thing. And she's got her classmates and she's going to school and she's having a wonderful time. And that's something I really try in the books to emphasize is that the children in the books that have the disability, they're out there having a wonderful time too. You know, they want to be out there at the beach and listening to the ocean or listening to the birds and making lays for their friends and like, and all of that. Because in my job, I do a lot of community instruction. My students uh, went to the college and they worked in the restaurant class and they worked in like six restaurants in our community. Uh -huh. And they he says, and I grew up in a small mountain community in Southern California. So that's where I ended up teaching for many years. And I wanted my students to have the same opportunities that I had. So when I was in elementary school, one day a week, we would go snow skiing. The whole school would go. Yeah. And so I wanted my students to have that opportunity. So I applied for a grant and for four years, we would go up there and my students would take adaptive ski lessons. Okay. And, and it didn't matter what their abilities were. Some of them could snowboard. Some yeah. of them learned how to ski, but they would have their skis. Uh, they called them, they would be reined to their instructor. They yeah. would each have their own instructor. Some of them would be inside a sled because they weren't strong enough or they had seizures. And so they couldn't, you know, just ski on their own. And, and it was wonderful. Uh, it was just a wonderful experience. I loved helping them. So, so Dylan, it's very interesting listening to you talk about these books and how you're enabling children, enabling people to understand. But one of the things I've always found with children, uh, uh, you know, those that are disabled and those are, that are not disabled, children like helping other children. Yes. So these sound like they are written to a level where a child that didn't have a disability could pick this up could learn about this disability and then help a school chum that maybe needs that kind of support and without being invasive, without making them feel, you know, that sounds like where your focus is. Is that one of your goals? Yes, so if, it, if a regular ed child read this and they had noticed out, out on campus that there's a child who's walking around like with the iPad and they're like, oh, they're just playing games. Like they don't understand what it's for. Mm -hmm. And now they're gonna know, oh, without, without walking up, like, what are you doing, you know? And then they'll know they can talk to the child. Like Queen Vernita was talking to Connor. Connor just couldn't answer her. So he had to use his iPad to answer her. And so a lot of people don't understand that. They, they, they think that they can't talk to the person you know, that even if the person can't respond to you verbally, there are many ways that they can respond to you and they can tell you. And that's the one thing we do when we go into the community. We teach our students to use their iPads or their little pecs pictures to mm -hmm. order their meals or to order their movie ticket. And right. so that the person that's doing this has to, has to pay attention to the child. Because a lot of times when you're out there, you end up not talking to the child. You end up talking to the adult. Yeah. You know, and yeah. because it's easier and, you know, and so we refer back, okay, now you need to tell her, okay, you need to be a little bit louder, you know, and then they'll stop and they'll, and then they'll listen and they'll start attending to the child themselves. And then suddenly realize, oh, they can talk or yeah, they know what they want. You know? yeah. and, so, and I know a lot of the schools are trying to help mainstream Yes. more children with disabilities. So one of the ways that I know some schools have gone into that is to partner some of their disabled yes. children with their traditional children. Yes. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times it is speaking a little slower. I mean, we tend to speak really, really fast. If you play back this particular interview, you're going to find we're just racing along. <laughs> yeah. That's not always effective with a child or even an adult that has disabilities. So is that how your books help enable those children to kind of partner up those regular traditional students with the, the children that need friends? They need yes. socialization. They need to know they're accepted as a person 
right person who learns differently so right. you're amazing dawn that you would go down to this path oh well that's what i do so <laughs> <laughs> so are your books available in what kinds of formats, Dawn? I mean, are they in like ebooks as well as um, audibles and that kind of thing? Because yes, they're, they're audibles, they're ebooks, and they're paperbacks. Okay. So, so the graphics are also fabulous because pictures always speak a thousand words. We've known that for years. Um, so how are your graphics generated? Are those from your students or are those another avenue? No, I have an illustrator and I do a lot of book events uh, at schools. And so in my local community, I have been part of the um, writing program that they do up here. And I met her there. And so she, she has been my illustrator for probably 10 years. And what she does is she takes actual pictures I have from our trip and she incorporates it into a picture. So this one is, this is my daughter, Ashley, and my granddaughter, Tyler. And Tyler and I were in Kona, and we were sitting inside the water right here, playing mermaid all day long. We got really sunburned, but <laughs> so what I did was I took her picture, mm -hmm. and we added the mom to the picture in Queen Vernita, and then she's learning all about mermaids, because that's what we were doing. So... You know, my books are created from the experiences that we have. Yep. And so right now I'm working on two other books. I have one on Halama Beach, which is a beach on the central coast of California. Yep. And we go up there every year and go camping. And so it's going to be a pre-K book. And it has kite flying and s'mores making and raccoons and the ostrich farm that's up there and all sorts of really fun stuff. And then I'm working on one that's going to be at least sixth grade with a friend of mine and it's on Tucson. It's on this favorite bed and breakfast I have there. And it's all about the desert and it's, it'll probably be out next Christmas. But this is one of the illustrations from it. Nice, I love and the cactus. I love the cactus. You're gonna go um, to the petrified forest, aren't you? I know you. <laughs> so the camel, we rode the camel actually in Palm Springs. But I wanted the camel in this book. So yep. he's like, okay, how are we doing that? So we put the camel in the book. And the queen is going on a camel ride for her birthday. <laughs> so this is what she's doing there. And we also, I don't think I have the picture. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, okay. This one is on Diwali. Okay. Now, this, this is Alvina. And she is my occupational therapist at school. Okay. And she, that's where she's from. And so this is her family in the traditional costume that they wear. And she, we had a little conference and we all talked about what, what she did and what they did. And so this is something they're doing at the bed and breakfast. Okay. And so we've added a lot of different cultures in that. Okay. So. That's perfect, Dawn. And I am so glad because you picked a perfect place for us to take a pause. Okay. So I want to take a break for another one of our sponsor messages. Now I come back and talk about where people can find you. So stick, stick around. Hi, I'm Rox Berkey. I write the Enigma series with my co-author. We write as Breakfield and Berkey. Today we have 12 books in this series with the Enigma threat being the newest release on January the 8th of 2021. It's an exciting book that goes to the next generation, and we hope that you'll check it out and all the other books in the Enigma series. Thank you. Publishing marketing package for authors. $1,500 value, save 40% now. It includes a six-piece marketing kit of 250 bookmarks, 250 business cards, 250 postcards, one table banner, one table runner, and 50 download cards plus. Book cover design, ebook creation, PDF setups, upload to Ingram Spark, scroll placement, video commercial, and interview on IBS, plus much more. Email bourgeoismedia at look.com for details or bourgeoismedia.com. Hi, I'm Mel Greenberg, author of Running With Our Eyes Closed, book one in the Empty Nested series. To the world, Samantha has the perfect life. Three wonderful children, a loving husband, so she thought, and a life split between Dallas and Italy. When her youngest leaves for college, it all comes crashing down, forcing Samantha to re-examine everything. 
Over seven days in one of the most romantic countries in the world, Samantha faces the past she thought she'd overcome and begins to redefine her role as a woman, a wife, and a mother. What would you do if you had to put your life on hold to care for a loved one? Well, during COVID, almost all of us have been doing just that. I'm Charlotte Canyon, award-winning author, actress, and speaker. And my book, You Have to Laugh to Keep from Crying, shows you how you can revive, thrive, and survive with four golden rules. You have to love one another. You have to respect one another. You have to have patience with one another. And most of all, you've got to forgive one another. I'm Charlotte Canyon, and I approve this message. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Rox Berkey on today's show. Fabulous. Um, children's author, and she goes from, you know, preschool to sixth grade. And let's talk about some of your books that have Queen Bernita and some that don't. So you were going to point out one that doesn't reflect on the queen. Tell me about that. This is a brand new book that I just published. I actually wrote it three years ago and it's called Dragon's Breath. And it's about King Teddy and Queen Giggles. And they live in the kingdom that's beautiful. And then all of a sudden this black smoke comes and the king has to figure out where the black smoke is coming from. And it's ruining all the crops and it's making everybody sad. And so I'm not going to tell you what he does or how he finds out, okay, but because <laughs> you have to read the story. Right. <laughs> but it's a story based on uh, kindness and integrity, and it's not okay to hurt people. And so again, there's some life lessons in here that are embedded into the story in a nice, nice, not pounding it into you way. Okay. And so, uh, this has only been out, I think, two months. So, and it's, it's being um, well-received and I'm very happy for it. And actually the book and the book trailer for this was just selected for the Conquering Disabilities Film Festival. Yay. Yeah. So, and I've entered it into um, Action on Film and Hollywood Days. They're all kind of this, this huge, this huge festival. And in fact, because I've won some awards um, in July, the end of July, I'm going to Vegas for a week. And we're going to go to this huge film festival that, that they have there. Yep. And I just had to buy my tickets for the red carpet awards event. So this is oh the first God. time I've won all these awards that I actually get to go there and get my award. <laughs> you know, I've never actually gotten to do it. So I'm really excited. I'm scared, but a little you know, a bit excited about it. So okay. how has COVID affected what you want to do to, to get your books out there? Has it really kind of, you know, minimized what you can do? Um, I kind of just changed, changed what I was doing. Okay. I was doing a lot of uh, school events. I do a lot of stuff with Story Monster Magazine out of Tempe, Arizona. Okay. So I travel there a lot. I do book reviews for them. I do literary contests with them. And I also travel to Sacramento and I uh, work with the CDE and the ETS creating test questions for our students. Mm -hmm. So I'm up there advocating for them. And so when this started, I was exhausted. I just got back from Sacramento. The next day I went to work and never went back. <laughs> but so it, it was a good thing for me because I got to stop and slow down. So I changed my direction. I've worked on four books this year. I've gotten two of them out. The third one just went to printing. I'm working on the Arizona one, and this summer I'm going to research one in Wyoming. Okay. And so I did that, got those out, and I started doing a lot of interviews and, you know, or um, Zoom interviews and written interviews and just doing a lot of networking that I didn't have the chance to do before. Okay. So, you know, I just did it in a different direction, and it's worked out really well because when we go back to school, I'm again going to get really busy and I won't be able to write the books or, you know, so I kind of so took advantage of reach out and touch you and get involved with you and getting you to maybe talk to their classes, even on a zoom meeting. How can yeah. people reach out to you? What's the best way? Well, I have a website, Dr. Don Menge. Uh, my publisher is Rushmore press. Uh, I have a Facebook Don Menge one. 
an Instagram, Dawn Minge, and a Twitter, Queen Vernita. So you can contact me under any of those. Um, and and then I can do whatever you need me to do. <laughs> okay, so on your website, is there a way that people can email you and yes. Yes. you and, and yes. all of that? And it's Dr. D-R, Dawn, D-A-W-N-M-E-N-G-E dot com? Yes. Okay, yes. awesome. And so, and if you go, if you go on my social medias and you go into the albums, you yeah. can see, like, if you go into the volcanic islands one, you can see the pictures we took of being in the shark cage, holding the, holding, we would go and the baby sioux horses would wrap their tails around your fingers. Yeah. And all of those videos and all of that are inside the, each album of Alaska or Hawaii. And so people can see um, what we're doing and you know, it's just, I, I learned um, another interview from Philadelphia mm -hmm. that, um, no, it was St. Louis. I'm sorry, St. Louis. My books are in the library and the person that interviewed me, his friend knew who I was. Okay. You are just the most passionate woman I've ever I'm met. I'm sorry. <laughs> forward to seeing you again. And thank you so much. So Dr. Dawn Mend, all you two inspect, look at her website. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Indie Beacon Radio. Thank you. Thank you for watching or listening to the Indie Beacon Show, produced by Dion Bourgeois for the Authors Marketing International LLC, copyright 2021. It's over by Dion Bourgeois. If you would like to be a sponsor of the show, please email us at authorsmarketing at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show, please complete the form found on our website at indiebeacon.com. You may also watch previous shows on the website. Music is Bollock of Words, created for Indie Beacon.